Hey, for about 20 years, uh, 20 years ago, I bet, we met this couple, and uh, they were one of our first missionaries that we brought on for support at our church down in Charleston. And many of you know them already. They've been here before, and uh, this church has supported them for a little while, I believe, and we're just honored to partner with Jay and Nancy Dickerson. They're dear friends of ours. Uh, they came to our church at Costa Harvest early on and uh, just shared, shared their love for Jesus and their love for the people around the world, especially in Central America. He's the, the area directors for all of our missionaries in, in Central America. America, I think they're the cream of the crop. I think they're choice people of God. First of all, they're lovers, lovers of Jesus, lovers of people, uh, but they love missions and they love proclaiming the gospel around the world. So I want Jay and Nancy to come and, and minister and have, have their uh, liberty to share whatever God's put on their hearts. But would you give a, a welcome from Rock Hill First Assembly of God to Jay and Nancy Dickerson. God bless you guys. Well, I was trying to move this a little bit, okay? It is so good to be here with you all this morning. My goodness, it's like coming home. So many faces that we know that we've, we've met before, and um, it's just a blessing for us to be here and be able to share kind of an update of what God's doing and where he's moving us and the things that he's doing now in our ministry. It is good to be here. We're supposed to be and uh, I just have a little Band-Aid on today. Last week I had a big old earmuff because uh, it had surgery. And I thought, oh, it was going to be some little minor thing. It wasn't. Um, I'm recovering well. And, but um, the little Band-Aid's there to remind me to, to behave myself. Uh, along with, and it's on this side with my wife. But anyway, we are just thrilled to be here. Um, and we appreciate this church. Pastors, thank you for allowing us to be yes. here. And um, yeah. it's so good to be here with you, friends. And um, we have some stories. You know, um, I noticed the police across the street. Uh, our first time we preached, we had somebody fall out. Not because of the power of the Holy Spirit. They fainted in church. And so um, ambulance came and the service was over. Second time we had something interesting happen. So I'm believing today that nothing, you know, I mean, if anybody falls out, it's because of the Holy Ghost and he wants to do something in your heart and life. We're just going to gather yeah. around and pray for him. Not even, <laughs> yeah. We're just going to gather around and That's see right. the Lord do a miracle. That's right. It is good seeing our friends of Lewis as well. Thank you for your friendship and your, your heart and just other friends and just good to be here. Um, Pastor, you don't know, when I was a young person in... Columbia, South Carolina, Central Assembly, we would have a lot of different events with this church, and there's a great history. And I, I believe this church was able to turn, sometimes people can't get past their history. Um, in fact, the church that I was in couldn't get past this history, and it's no longer in existence. It's a sad thing, but we believe that God is still working, and even when we have a history, we also have a future. And so let's be very conscious of of his presence. And it, we felt it from the very beginning. And as we were talking about the presence of the Lord and, and the names of Jesus, he is our healer, isn't he? He is the great I am. And I love that because it's present tense. He was and he will be, but he also is the great I am. So I don't know what you're facing today, but the great I am is willing to meet you at your point of need. And yeah, so this, we're glad. This also reminds me of greater works than these shall you see. And I think, I think that even now we're all poised for that. Okay, Lord, we want the greater. We're, we're mm -hmm. looking for what you want next. Yeah. And I love that because it, when we come, there's such a welcoming presence here. And I believe that people here are looking for that. They're wanting the greater things mm -hmm. shall be. They're going to come. And we're excited about that yeah. today too. And we, we have the privilege of, we've been married almost 44 years, yeah, and um, we were 12, you know, anyway, that's why we look so young and all these old kids we have, but um, we're still learning and growing, but we get to preach together and share together, but there's never an idea of exactly what's going on. This morning, we were talking about the presence of the Lord. I was reminded of reading in Luke recently, and it was a time when when Zechariah, they were going to be the parents of John the Baptist. And the angel of the Lord came to him and told him what's going to happen. He just says, oh, it can't. I'm too old. And um, Zechariah and Gabriel, the angel, said, I've been in the presence of the Lord, and he sent me to you. Amen. So the next month he wasn't going to speak. But what spoke to me, being in the presence of the Lord is not something we stay in. 
It's something that sends us out. So as this month, you've been focusing on missions, you've been, and we appreciate that. We appreciate Amen. your support. We applaud you as heroes, but realize the presence of the Lord isn't to keep, is to send us out, yeah. to send us out. Nancy and I have been serving in missions for a lot of years now, and we serve as area directors, and people wonder what that is. Let me just explain the PowerPoint. Nancy, Nancy did some PowerPoints for us, but TCA stands for Team Central America. We have teams in the seven countries of Central America, and we focus, function as a team. But we wanted to let you know just who we are, what do area directors do. So if we can kind of move through the next picture, maybe you can see these. Um, it's kind of a peak of what we do, Nancy, with her hand raised. I was looking at that picture. T talk about where we were. This, this is a house that was built, I mean, that was bought. Um, the girls started the Chicas de Promesa program to really help and rescue girls from abusive situations after school programs, because that's when they found out that parents, the kids were more at risk. And so the girls got their house and the boys are going, well, what about us? And one little boy came, to, came to, up to Jay and said, sir, can I ask you a question? What about us? Don't we matter? So we, it, you know that the Lord helped send in money, and that was we were that was the victory because we'd just gotten that property, and now, um, Campiones for Cristo, uh -huh. Champions for Christ, the boys program is is yeah. raised up, and That's so right. we're excited about that. It's a discipleship program uh, that makes a difference in lives. When we started with the girls. There were about 150 cases reported to the police every year of girls being abused, sexually violated. And so as Mayor, our missionary started and we helped with that program as well, there was a change because girls realized it was the dirty secret that we can talk about and we don't have to live that way. So in like what, one or two years, it went from 150 cases to none. And the police actually came to the director of the school and says, what's happening? We're not having any more involvement. Why? Because the word of God changes lives. Discipleship Amen. is not Amen. just more knowledge. Yep. And we want to really emphasize that. It's application of what you know. Yep. A lot of people know a lot, but are they living what they know? So yep. uh, the next picture is... It's, a, it's a really a chapel service in, in that same school yeah. ministering to some of the, those older kids. This one is us. Uh, Nancy just loved that picture of me looking, you know, out. We were actually serving refugees in the Haitians who were coming through. I, I know we have a lot of political issues on the migration, but it's happening through each country. Well, people are hungry, and so you really can't leave them. And is Amy in that picture? Probably Amy. Amy, Amy Cartwright. the Cartwrights were up there, but I don't know where they yeah. are. In the we get to people. serve with our missionaries, but Amy and Cartwright is really the one who initiated this yeah. program of feeding those. Uh, next picture. Okay, one of the privileges that um, I get to have is baptizing MKs. MKs are missionary kids. As you pray for your missionaries, pray also for your missionary yes. kids because they're called as well. And some of them, they have trouble adjusting back to the U.S. They've lived out of the country or different things going on. But please learn the missionary kids' names and make contact with them. Pray for them specifically and let them know you're praying for them because that makes a huge difference. But every two years, I get the, ch the opportunity of baptizing these MKs. This one was very special to me because our speaker for the, for the event that time was our older son, Parker, and I got to baptize my grandson. So that was a, who was born in Costa Rica when they were MKs there. Um, uh, MAs. Yeah, as MAs. Next picture. Okay, you want to talk? I'm, I'm, I realize well, I'm Well, this is just, we away. have a, this is ministering to our missionaries at a, at a retreat that we went to, that we had for them. And it's just such a joy to be together and pray with our missionaries and lift them up. They, we, we all carry around stuff. We all need to be prayed for. We all need, and, and missionaries aren't exempt. They need it too. And so to be able to come together and pray and love on our missionaries and encourage them and then send them back out to keep working, it is just such an awesome opportunity that we get to pastor our missionaries. Well, the next picture shows probably a big group of them. We have um, about 150 of them there. And if you look close, you might see Ken and Griselda, and their kids are, are, are part of our, our missionary family as well. This was at the, near the end, or still in the middle of the pandemic, and our missionaries have been working. They were staying on the field, and we knew it was risky getting everybody together, but we felt it was really vital that they come together. So we had all of them come, and we did all the mask mandate. We did everything. Everybody tested. 
And nobody got COVID, nobody got sick from it, but the Lord, the presence of the Lord met us in just a, such a phenomenal fashion. And um, not only for missionaries, but remember your pastoral leadership and those who are, who are staff, they need the presence of the Lord because so many times we're giving out, giving out, giving out, but who's helping us take in? So pray for, pray pray for, for your leadership Amen. as well. Amen. All right. Well, is that all the pictures you did, baby? I think that's baby? it for now. Yeah, we yeah, can we'll wait on that one. Yeah, well, we, we, there's a couple. Oh, there's, you know, we can look at some good, a good looking couple over there. Well, today we want to share a message, um, and we were calling it Obedience Brings Freedom. Again, I was reading in, in Luke 11 this week, and 10 lepers came to Jesus, and they said, What do you want? And they said, We want to be healed. And Jesus spoke to them and says, go to the priest, and as they went, they were healed. The healing came in the obedience. The freedom came in the obedience. We like the miracle ahead of time, don't we? You know, I want it all done. You know, but if you read through Scripture, there are times where there's instant healings, sometimes progressive, but at this time, their healing came as they went. So we want to talk about obedience. In our Scripture, you can show that next verse. Um, I'm reading from Joshua chapter 3. I'm going to read just a portion. You know the story. It's the time when the children of Israel are at the brink of going into the promised land. They're ending 40 years of, of a journey because of their lack of faith, but now it's about to end. But before they go in, they have to cross the Jordan Sea, Jordan River, Red Sea, Jordan River. Um, and they had heard the story from the previous time that the sea parted and they walked across dry land. But that wasn't going to happen this time. The water was not going to part until they put their foot in it. When they obeyed the voice, they would experience the miracle. I believe with all my heart that God still speaks to us today. Amen. Sometimes it's a loud voice, sometimes in circumstances, but it all confirms with Holy Spirit working within us. Well, this passage of Scripture, verses 5 and 6, and then we'll read verses 12 and 13 of Joshua chapter 3. Then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua said to the priest, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on before they people. Before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. Now let me stop there for a minute. The Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of the Lord. And they weren't going anywhere without the presence of the Lord, not only accompanying them, but leading them. Sometimes we make the prayer, Lord, bless what I'm doing. The prayer should be, Lord, I want to do what you're blessing. I want to know your presence. I want to know your voice. I think over the years we learn to recognize his voice. Sometimes we think it's the voice of the Lord and we find it wasn't, but that's a learning point as well. God speaks to his people. Amen. So Joshua was leading the people, but they were going to take the presence of the Lord first. Down the next verses, verses 12 and 13 says this. Now, therefore, take 12 men from the tribes of Israel, from each tribe a man, and when the soles of the feet of the priests bearing the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from flowing, and the waters coming down from above shall stand in one heap. And we need to have some context of this story. This miracle was going to happen if they put their feet in the water. Otherwise, they were going to stay in the wandering state. The story is about Joshua. Joshua had been part of this story, part of the journey for 40 years. He was in Egypt when the plagues came. He was there with the Passover. And he was in part of the group when Moses led them out of Egypt. And they went to the Red Sea. The Red Sea parted. The land was dry, which is another miracle. Have you ever tried to walk in water and it's just like you're just getting stuck? The water was dry. They walked across. Joshua was part of that. Joshua was part of it when they went and Moses sent 12 spies to this land to come back and give a report. Joshua and Caleb came back and said, it's a cool place. I mean, the grapes are humongous. They got good food. and I mean, there's some giants there, but we can take them. Ten people, ten others saw the same thing. 
But their perspective was different because they were looking through natural eyes. They said, yes, it has big grapes and honey, it's a beautiful land, but the giants are too big for us. Unfortunately, the children of Israel listened to the report of the 10. Whose report are you listening to? See, when God calls, it's not an easy thing. It's not the quick thing, not the expedient thing, it's his voice. So they wandered for the next 40 years till all the adults passed away. And now only Joshua and Caleb were the only adults still, still alive. And they're at their brink. Now, through the time their journey, Joshua had become Moses' assistant. Everybody recognized it. He was working with Moses. He went into the tabernacle, into the presence of the Lord. There were times where he stayed behind when Moses left. He experienced the supernatural presence of the Lord. And though Moses was dying, everybody knew that Joshua was going to be the leader. Everybody knew that except Joshua. It was in his head, but it wasn't necessarily in his heart. It's interesting to me because I've read, if, you, if we, yeah, I'm, I'm, up, you. I'm up, I'm up. If we look at um, just a little bit earlier, we see what God was doing in preparing um, Joshua for what he was going to do. So in Joshua chapter one, verses um, six and seven, the Lord starts out with be strong and courageous for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. Be strong and courageous. And that, that really kind of got my interest. I thought, okay, that's three times God is saying, be strong and courageous. Be very strong and courageous be strong and courageous. I thought, what is the significance of that? So I looked it up, did a little research, and when something is in the Bible three times, God put it there to get our attention. He needed to get Joshua's attention because, again, it was head knowledge. It wasn't his heart knowledge. And I thought about this. How many times do you, have you counted to your children? One, two, three. Three. And what happens on three? Nothing. They start <laughs> counting again. Anyway, no, I'm sorry. Well, with that sense, that's when they go, oh, no, 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 I'm doing it right now. I'm doing it right now. It's, I, I'm, I'm going, Mom. I'm doing it right now, at least in my house. Maybe it is y'all... different. I have to say, our kids knew when Dad or Mom said three, it was done. But it's amazing how the grandkids, it's a little different. The one three becomes like 96 or something. But yeah. I'm, I'm, well, I'm sorry. Anyway, anyway, one three. <laughs> I went three. in the notes. I'll, I'll hush. Yeah. This is my time. <laughs> no, it's, it's interesting to me because many times the Lord really does need to get our attention, doesn't he? That's right. And so he says, be strong and courageous. I don't know who's here today that needs to hear this, but you need to be strong and courageous because God's got That's it. Right. And you need to keep going. You need to cross the Jordan and let the Lord give you the victory. Mm-hmm. The Jordan... The whole Jordan River experience was going to change Joshua if he obeyed the voice of the Lord. I want you to know whenever God speaks, well, I don't want to say 100% of the time because somebody will say, well, it didn't happen this way. But normally when God speaks to you, it's something impossible for you to do. It's bigger than you. It's not something you do in your own power. He's looking for someone to trust him. Just like Zechariah said, it can't happen that way. And Gabriel said, I have just come from the presence of the Lord to tell you, you won't speak for the next few months. Being in the presence of the Lord, God speaks to his people, and it is challenging. But I love in in, in Joshua 3, first it said tomorrow, but then in in verse 7 it says, today I will begin to exalt you in all the eyes of Judah and all the children of Israel. This time... This was going to be different than the last time. The miracle would happen when they put their feet in the water. For Joshua, it would establish them as their leader. But for them, his obedience and their obedience would bring them freedom from the wandering and they could finally enter the promised land. Obedience brings freedom. First for you and then for all those you're called to serve. Today, as you you are part of this church, and you have a mission's heart, and we are very grateful for that. 
but realize your, your monthly support, your gifts, realize it's for people. It's not just programs. There are people's lives. People will be touched because of your faithfulness. And I believe that, I, I like that cable bill. Nobody knows what a cable bill anymore, but we can say internet bill, right? Because anyway, uh, whatever you stream, you know, if you're, not, if you're giving more to that than, than missions, what a challenge to each of us. But realize that what we're doing is obeying the voice of the Lord. It's always bigger than we think we can do. God wants his people to live by faith and in obedience to his word and voice. But obedience isn't for sissies. Is it okay if I say sissies here? I want to be politically correct. The children of Israel followed after Joshua in, and they experienced the power of the Lord, and they had a testimony to share what God had done. It was no longer theory. It was no longer kinetic energy. It was potential. Something had happened in them. You know, obedience isn't easy, is it? You think about that one, two, three, children having to obey what you've told them to do. That's not always easy to do. Obedience is so important. And it also means waiting on the Lord's timing. It's not our timing. I'm not good with waiting. I'm just going to be really really honest here. In Genesis 6, verse 22, the scripture says, and Noah did all that the Lord told him. You know, I'd love that to be put on the tombstone, the headstone someday. And Nancy did all that the Lord told her. What, what a legacy to be able to have something said like that about you. But when we look at this, the Lord commanded him to do what he needed to do. He did all that the Lord told him to do. He waited and waited for a hundred years. Right. And in Habakkuk, it says, though it tarry, wait for it. <laughs> Habakkuk 2, verses 2 and 3, said, or two, yeah, 2 and 3 says, And the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so he may, he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. I love that. It will not lie. Mm. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Mm. Waiting is not easy. That's right. Obedience at times means waiting. But it will not delay. Mm. It will not lie. Because God is going to do what he's promised he's going to do. We had to learn about waiting. I think we still have to learn about waiting. You hear the voice of the Lord, and we think it's going to be tomorrow. Early in our time, we, we first began serving in Belize. While we were there, pastoring, building churches, involved in all kinds of ministry. And we felt like the Lord told us to start a high school. And you say, high school? Missionaries, they build churches, preach. What, what was with that? We began to realize that in the country of Belize, only 50% of the young people, when they finish primary, can go on to high school. There's not space for them. So the kids who have really good grades or money, there's a space. But what about the others who have great potential? So the Lord spoke to us about starting a high school. And we thought, okay, we had the voice of God. We'd raise a little bit of money. And so we went and the government gave the Assemblies of God of Belize a, a piece of land. So we went and invested some, some money in, in the property and started. We were excited about it. All of a sudden, somebody comes and says, what are you doing? And so we're building high school. Well, why are you doing it on my property? Hmm. Come to find out that the government had given two pieces, two people, and there was no negotiation. It was actually taken from us illegally, but it was taken from us. Um, so we went back to the government. They said, yeah, you're right. We did wrong. You can sue us, but we have no money. So we'll just give you some more land. <laughs> yeah, well, we went and looked at the piece of land. didn't work out because you couldn't get to it. Another piece of land was a big hole. I mean, there was obstacle after obstacle. And I was, you know, we weren't looking for work. We had plenty to do. We were doing ministry. But there were two voices in my head. Every time I told Nancy, I said, we're not doing this anymore. The first voice I hear was with Nancy saying, well, what's the Lord saying? And the second voice was the Lord himself reminding me of his call, of his timing. Though we didn't understand, we moved after some obstacles, we found a piece of land. We began the building. People would say, what are you doing? I mean, it was a place of ridicule. It was not an easy experience. And as I said, we weren't looking for things, but we couldn't get away from the voice of God. That was 20 years ago, and we've seen how the Lord has been faithful. 
It's been real exciting as, as I think maybe the last time we were here, we were talking about wanting to do a discipleship program at the high school and several things needed to happen, come into place for that to take place. And the Lord's working through all of that. But when we started the high school, um, I'll never forget the day we opened the school. Oh my gracious, it was so exciting for us. I had tears in my eyes as we drove up to the campus. Baby, you cry all the time. Well, I know, but it was even better that day. Okay. And I had my Kleenex. I don't okay. always have my Kleenex. Um, but we began, and that uh, how we opened the school and got it going, that's just, I mean, miracle after miracle, we saw God's hand. If you tarry, if you wait for it, mm. God's going to bring it to pass. And we saw that over and over again. But we began leading these kids to the Lord. It was incredible. We, we broke them up into small groups discipleship groups. We were supposed to start with 45 kids. We started with 99 and we had kids everywhere. And God just began to really bless the school. People would come on and say, man, I really feel something different on this campus. Well, it was the Lord. When we started 20 years ago, we opened the school with two ideas. We really wanted to reach those kids who maybe didn't have the best grades. And then you go, well, wait a minute, what are you talking about? These kids have to have, pass a test to get into high school. And if you don't pass the test, you don't get to go into high school. So many kids, they, 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 the teachers teach seventh and eighth grade so that kids pass these tests. But their schoolwork fails and suffers, and they don't necessarily do really well on their report cards. And so it's just kind of a mess. And we realized this, and we realized that these kids needed a chance. They needed an opportunity. And then the other, as Jay said, were those kids who really didn't have the finances. What could we do? How could we help these kids be able to be educated? So the Lord just really moved in a powerful way during that whole process. And it's wonderful because... Um, their, their ability to be able to come to school and be able to learn has given them an opportunity to do greater things in their community. You want to see some pictures? Wait, okay. We could do that. Okay, this is this year. We've got almost... 300. 300 students. So they're, they're all lined up here. And we had a team there just two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And the guy that came had a drone. And so this is all the kids. I love New Hope High School. Um, so these are, these are our kids. And we love what God is doing even to this day. Um, because of the way the school started. We have continued to keep these goals and these, these ideas going, although Jay and I have not been there. These things have continued. It was a DNA that was planted in that school 20 years ago. And we're excited because today we're seeing things continue to grow, student body grow, but the, the, the opportunities for kids to grow as well. Last year we had a student that came in and um, he had gone to several other schools and they'd all denied him. And he thought, well, I'll try, one, I'll try one more. And he comes to New Hope High School. And the schools that had denied him said, I'm sorry, we just really don't have any way to be able to take care of you or, or to, to help he has, you. Yeah. He has cerebral palsy. So they, he came to New Hope High School. And um, they said, well, of course, we'll make, we'll make a space for him. Absolutely. And so we came into the school, but what the teachers and the principal didn't realize, and I'll cry now, <laughs> the students took it upon themselves to get him to class, to get him to the lunchroom, to get him to the bathroom. There are two kids. If you keep going in the, in the there's, this is the school. This is the, the, what it looks like today. And we're still building. We've got a, a, a building that's in process. But if you go to the next picture, this is Eduardo. That's not his name, but that's what we're calling him. This is Eduardo. And this is one of the guys. The, there are two, the whole class has just stepped up. But there are two students who alternate. This is my day to take care of Eduardo. And tomorrow's your day. And so um, we've gotten picture. We asked for a picture of him, and because treat him with dignity. But um, you can see he's got his cane, and he walks on his hand and shoulder, and you get to see him smiling because there was a school that said no one will be denied. There was a place, and every other school had had denied Eduardo, but somehow it got into the, the spirit and to the to the DNA yes. of the school. 
And what you're doing in giving to missions is you're touching the Eduardos. You get that? The Eduardos, the Maria's Ahmeds, they're the ones. So when you give to missions, I want you to see that. And even though we're treating him with respect, we're not doing a face-on picture. We're treating him with respect. Eduardo's life has made difference because of people like you. But he's also difference. made a difference in the school because it's given the kids an opportunity to think about somebody other than themselves. And we've watched him laugh with his classmates. We've watched him smile as he's walked with the students, to helping him get to his classes. And he's got a smile on his face because he's got hope. Right. He's got a hope for a future. Yeah, we don't have a picture. We have another miracle of this year. And we'll tell that next time we're here about, about the next miracle. Just the stories. And New Hope has a special place in our heart. I mean, 20 years ago, we were, we were there, founded the school, and after two years, we were asked to leave, and not the school. <laughs> not by the school. <laughs> okay. We were like asked to leave. Like I say, this isn't practice. This is all, we, our leadership asked us to go to Costa Rica to serve as, as area directors in this role. So um, now uh, we get to go back. The, the lady who's now the principal of the school was the first person we hired. Um, uh, there's all kinds of success stories. One of our first students that Nancy had in her Bible class said, my dream is to be a teacher at New Hope High School. She's been teaching there for 10 years now. Libney's is a success story. We had young people, now I can talk about Levi, Levi and his wife and, and Melissa, who are now pastoring. They're planting churches in Belize. We have great stories of that. That's what your giving makes a difference for. That's what hearing the voice of God and maintaining when it would be easier to quit because we got too much to do. That's what your giving does. Does that make sense? You need to put names with what you're doing, Pastor, because it does make a difference in lives. But we've been asked to go back and help. We get to go back, and they've invited us back because the leadership, there's such a huge need and problem in Belize with character. With the heart of people, it's not leadership ability, it's the character of a leader. When young people have seen their government leaders and now unfortunately their church leaders who have sweethearts on the side, they see people who have all this knowledge but they're not living. So the superintendent asked us, we need to start a discipleship program for young people. And we said discipleship is not more knowledge. It's applying what they do know. So the Lord is, is allowing us to go back and, and to start. We started a soft launch, a project accelerate to disciple these young people, to raise up leaders so that they can disciple others throughout their country. The more impact they have, they can have more impact than we ever will. But would you pray with us as we raise, see leaders who come to the top, who will go to other parts of the country and live a life before them not just talk a good talk, but live a life because they're the ones that impact their nation. So the Lord has given us the privilege of hearing his voice one more time to step out in faith in something we can't do on our own. That's, right. That's why I know it's God because right. it's bigger than us. Yeah. I mean, we, we prayed. We prayed, Lord, we need a leader for this. And the Lord said, I've got one. And it was us. It's like, Lord, somebody younger and smarter and, well, not prettier because you got that part. But I'm just saying, but, you know, yeah, I agree. God is not limited by your limitations. God is not limited by your shortcomings. And he's not afraid of what we can't do. What I'm excited to say is God still speaks to his people today. Amen. He speaks to us by name. He called Joshua by his name and he gave him an opportunity to step and move forward. So the Lord is challenging us anew and afresh and we're excited about it. As we started the program earlier this year, we had some spiritual life. We had kids who would stay and come and we're just we're really ramping up this year of, of the challenge for discipleship, challenging physically, spiritually. And we were at the graduation this year, 
and didn't know the impact. And what was the valedictorian? What was she, what was she saying? What did she? She said her her father died during COVID, and she went through a very rough time. School was kind of online sometimes and in person. You all know how that was if you have kids that were trying to figure out the school system, and and it was the same way in 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 Belize. And so um, she went through a very tough time, a very dark time. But we had started the the spiritual the spiritual emphasis week. And she was there in, during that spiritual emphasis week, and the Lord just really did something to her. And so when she graduated, she says, and I give thanks to our son Parker was with us, um, Pastor Parker or Pastor um, Jay, Miss Nancy, for coming because what they did during that time for me has helped me grow spiritually and know that I have a future. Mm-hmm. And I thought, wow, you know, the, we, nobody asked for any words or anything. like. We had no idea what the Lord was doing during those times. But to know that he is touching the lives of these young people. And now she's headed to college. And to be able to take that with her to another school, mm-hmm. another campus, and be able to flourish is just beautiful. We're excited about what the Lord's going to do, even though it's way beyond us. But I guess our challenge today is Joshua faced a miracle, but he also faced the possibility of, of failing. See, when we obey the voice of God, there's not always a guarantee. I can guarantee you God will come through, but there's a real risk in obeying the voice of the Lord. I don't want to minimize that. But we've been doing this long enough. We've seen God's faithfulness. We've seen how he works, and we know what he wants to do. So I want to challenge you today. To be people who hear the voice of God. To be those who are willing to step out when he tells you to step out, even though it seems impossible. I know we want to experience the miracle before we step in the water, but it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes it's stepping in the water. And God's looking for that kind of person and people. And I believe you can find him here. Amen. So for just a moment... I'd like for us to take time to pray and just allow the Lord to speak to us, to challenge us. And maybe it's to call us afresh. I remember as a 15-year-old, when we didn't have youth camp at Possum Kingdom, we had at King's Mountain. I remember most of you going, where is that? Well, that's where I went to camp. That's where God spoke to me about ministry and missions. I remember the day, but it took a number of years before it happened. There's timing, it's the Lord's timing, but he's looking for people who are willing to face the obstacles and not give up.